Hello friends, in today's documentary, we'll talk about Thor, the god of the thunder and the alien war of Ragnarok. Cultural origins of Thor. There are few gods among all mythologies in history that are as popular and known as Thor, the northern god of thunder, lightning and fertility. Thor originated around 13 BC as part of the old religion of the Scandinavian Nordic tribes. They were also known as Vikings, they were a wartime maritime society. They have invaded and robbed villages from the European coast and islands. For centuries, the northern kingdoms have emerged from the conquered countries and nations, including those now known as Denmark, Norway and Sweden. The Vikings were proud of their power. They even believed that the only way to reach the later life, the paradise known as Valhalla, was by death on the battlefield. The northern ones were also major traders. They traded various metals, food and jewelry throughout Europe and beyond, including Russia, Constantinople and other Islamic territories on their established trade routes. In addition, they were exploratory experts. They invented new forms of navigation and discovered new lands. For example, they were the first Europeans to arrive in America. Findings of jewelry, armies, weapons and northern sculptures have been found in Europe and Scandinavia. Many of these objects describe northern and highly widespread gods of Thor's iconography. Thor's place in northern religion. There are no surviving Norwegian written documents describing their faith system or religious practices. The closest sources available are from Christians a few hundred years later. The two texts considered to be the best sources of northern religion are Edda Poetic and Prosa Edda. Both written 200 years after Christianity became the predominant Scandinavian religion and the northern religion was no longer practiced. Even so, these books provide the best available information on the beliefs and religious habits of the north. The northern religion was a polytheistic one, which means that more gods were venerated. The most important gods, or Asa as they were called, lived in a mystical world called Asgard, and frequently visited Midgard or the Earth. Besides Asa, the Nordic people believed in many mythological creatures. One of these most prominent creatures was Jotun or, as they are best known today, giants. Jotun were symbols of chaos. While some Jotun were friendly, many Jotun sought to devour gods and people alike. Thor was the last protector against Jotun, and that made him one of the most important Asa of northern religion. The prevalence of Thor iconography over the northern weapons and armies indicates its significance to the warriors, and that he might have prayed for Thor's power before entering a battle. The Nordic farmers would also most likely have asked Thor to bring them a plentiful crop to feed their families during the tough Scandinavian winters. Symbols and Iconography Being one of the most important gods of northern mythology, Thor is often described as the god who best embodies the features that northern culture esteemed most, in particular power, masculinity, ferocity, goodness and, also in extreme love for alcohol. Many later artworks describe it as having a thick red beard, long hair flowing and extremely muscular body. In northern culture, the beard was seen mainly as a sign of masculinity. In terms of power, Thor was considered to be the strongest of all god. His power was so immeasurable that he almost accidentally destroyed Midgard on several occasions because of his bad decisions and short temperament. Thor is often shown to have a pair of iron gloves called Jangrapa, as well as a belt called Megingjor, both of which say that they multiply their wonderful power. Imjolnir. The object most associated with Thor is his hammer, Imjolnir. Indeed, few obvious weapons of mythology are as well known today as the Hammer of Thor. In northern mythology, it is said that the sound of the thunder is Thor that hits Jotun with Imjolnir in a remote country, making sure that they will never reach human civilization. Forged by the dwarf brothers Eitri and Broca, this weapon has the power to turn itself into Thor's hand, to invoke screws and hits so destructive that they can eradicate a mountain in one stroke. Imjolnir was so heavy that only those with immense force, like Thor, a few other gods, or Jotun, could lift him. Even for Thor, Imjolnir's weight is so great that he needs the gloves and the iron belt to increase his already prodigious power to use it efficiently in the battle. 
A notable feature of Imjolnir is his short handle. The story behind the length of the handle is that Eitri and Broca were distracted as Loki made the mallet, the god of viciousness, who turned into an insect and hummed past the brother's head. Although viewed by many as an instrument of destruction, Imjolnir was also seen as a symbol of fertility. Thor's hammer was often presented in stories as a holy object, used by Thor to bless marriages. Harvests and other festive events in Northern culture. Imjolnir's image is one of the most widespread symbols in Northern culture, which appears in engravings, tapestries and jewelry. Personality. Thor is regarded as a good, though extremely temperamental individual. He is described as the shepherd of humanity, handling his hammer to keep people safe from evil forces. Thor is also known for parties with people or to go with them in adventures or hunting trips. Even though Thor was Jotun's biggest opponent, Thor was a friend of many Jotuni and in several stories. Even had children with them. In addition, like most of the northern gods, Thor liked to spend in Valhalla with those people who had died in the battle. And in these parties Thor sometimes drink literally alcohol oceans. Thor's protective nature matched his extreme temperament. Thor was also not a particularly intelligent god. In fact, many stories about Thor involved someone to fool him. In these stories, Thor usually becomes so angry that the responsible smither becomes either dead or pleads for mercy. In its center, however, Thor is described as a good and protective god, defending the people of Asgard, as well as the humble men of the Midgard, as their guardian. Tangrishnir and Tanmyrster. Despite some modern interpretations of Thor that show him the ability to fly, the ancient texts do not give him that ability. Rather, he showed Thor riding a flying car drawn by two goats. Tangrishnir and Tanmyrster. These two goats are said to have the capacity to return to fully healthy life if their bones remained unharmed. There are several stories in which Thor kills his own goats and eats them and warns others not to eat their bones. These goats are among the oldest and closest comrades of Thor and are one of his main modes of transport. The Divinity Tree. The Northern Zealities, such as those of many other police religions have a long and complicated even disturbing history of the family, which includes inbred, adultery and bestiality. Thor's father is Father Odin, king of Asgard and Asa, and god of wisdom, war, poetry, and fallen fuse. Thor's mother was a Jotun named Jord, who was one of Odin's many meesters. Moreover, while Thor had no direct siblings, he had many siblings and siblings. Some prominent step-siblings from Odin's family include Balder, god of love, light, joy and purity, silent god Vir, and the blind archers of the winter, Hor. Thor is also married to Sif, the goddess of the harvest, recognized by its long and gold hair. Sif was considered a symbol of femininity and, unlike her husband, it was not a warrior. Ready for battle. Between the confusion and the sound of gods and fighting men, the heavens opened, and the fire giants of Mespel walked from the south of the sisters. All of these forces are heading toward Vigid's fields. In Asa, Master Heimdall rose to his feet and calls on the Galar horn to urge the gods and announce Ragnarok's final battle. As the decisive moment approaches, the world tree Idrisil trembles, although it remains standing. Everyone in Hell's kingdom is worried, the dwarfs shout in the mountains, and Junheim is falling. Asa's heroes are armed and set off toward Vigid. The triggering of the final fight in Ragnarok. I meet in the esatological myth of Ragnarok the well-known cliches of all apocalyptic literature. The decadent and lost graves, the people are turning. They are killing each other, the earth shudders, the sun darkens, the stars fall. Skull and Hattie Wolves finally catch the goddess of the Sun of Sun and her brother, the god of Manny Moon, and devour them. As a result of the great earthquake, the trees are ripped with roots and the mountains are collapsing. Each chain or link breaks, thus releasing on Loki and Fenris. The giant wolf, Fenris, will clench up its fangs from above the sky, and the fangs below the ground. The monsters come out of the depths of the earth. Jormund rises out of the ocean surrounding the Midgard and causes catastrophic floods. He spat venom with every breath, 
poisoning the waters, the earth and the sky. Northern mythology originally transforms the prototype of the eschatological myth. New elements are emerging, such as a winter of three years, Fimble Winter. A horde of giants dude by Harim invades East Midgard traveling on a ship made of the dead's fingernails from Juneheim. In the midst of this disaster, Surt and other giants, the fire giants, will come from the Musvelheim, will dart on the ground, climb on the rainbow bridge, Bifrost, with the thought of attacking and destroying the Asgard of the gods. The Bifrost will break under the weight of the giants, breaking any connection between Midgard and Asgard. Gary. The monstrous dog in the cave Nipahethlia will escape the chains and follow the giants on their way to Vigid, where the final battle will take place. Eventually, the giants will meet an overwhelming resistance from the army of gods and heroes gathered over time in Valhalla de Walkiris. The first to notice the giants was Heimdall and called from the Galahorn to announce all the gods. At the sound of the horn the Yggdrasil tree itself will shake. The huge host of the heroes in Valhalla has 432,000 Einherjari, 800 of each of the 540 gates of the Great Palace. The final battle of the alien gods of Ragnarok. God Odin attacked Fenris, who was helped at first by Thor. Thor, however, had to leave his father to respond to the offensive of the continually enemy Jormungand snake. The first to fall to the battlefield was Freya. In his fight with the Surt, and that is because he gave up his sword, which freezes anything, to his servant or Skirnir some time ago. But it took a deep brawl for Freya to die. Tyr is committed to killing Grem, will succeed, but will be seriously injured. Heimdall is fighting Loki, and as a result of this long and exhausting confrontation between the two. No one will survive, Thor kills Jormunting with his mallet, Imjolnir, but dies after a short while because of the snake's venom. Odin fights Fenris with his spear, Gungnir, but is defeated by wolf and devotion. To avenge his father, Vidar would kill the wolf with his bare hands, breaking his jaws. Finally, the Surt will spread over all nine worlds of the cosmos flame and burn everything. The earth will sink into the sea and there will be very few survivors. Renaissance of the Universe It is said that after Ragnarok, a new earth will rise, green, beautiful and flatted. The Wall Wolf, who swallowed Sunna, will give birth to a little bit as beautiful as the goddess. This will continue the road Sunna took in the sky. Thus, a new sun will rise. Several gods will survive the disaster. They include Vili, Odin's brother, Vili and Vidar, the sons of the Z Odin. Modi and Magni, the children of god Thor, who will inherit the hammer Imjolnir and Honir, god with the prophetic gift, who will prep what will continue to occur. Baldur and Hod will leave Helheim, re-reconciled and live in heaven in their father's palace, Valhalla. It is not mentioned that one of the northern goddess has survived Ragnarok, but it is possible that Frigg and Freya are some of those who will live after the end of the world. Only two of the men will survive, Lif and Lithril, and that because they hid among the branches of Idrisil where Surt's flames could not touch them and where they fed dew. They will become the Sorgi of a new humanity that will worship a completely changed and operated shoe of the gods.